Okay, let's do a sound check. Testing. I can kind of hear myself if I rotate my mouth towards my phone. So, in any event, um, let's start out. Well, let's move this cord first. Two, four, six, eight. Nine, ten, and eleven. And I can actually fit those in this uh, ten shot tube. You can see it's an eighteen inch barrel with a, uh, I believe it's a two and a half inch tactical choke, but it's just a regular choke. And, uh, you know, for the most part, those are uh, mini buckshot, which were pretty good. This is the uh, swivel point that I've installed also for the sling. And on that bandolier, I carry primarily buckshot. Uh, I save slugs for the semi-auto. And uh, let me see, this is the two and three quarter, three inch, 870 Remington. Uh, I have upgraded the furniture. I believe the only thing that's stock on it is the, um, is this section right here. I mean, I've done lo a little bit to you know, keep it, or at least have it function a little bit better, but this entire section is, the you know, original part. Oops, my nice shell's over. One sec. Let's get those out of the way. They're nice when they're loaded, but loose, pain in the ass. So in any event, uh, I would, before they stop making them ATI, Holding buttstock, I have the uh, modified with plus five on the uh, on the actual folding buttstock, which I kind of felt would help with heavier buckshot, but the buck didn't really kick that much uh, to begin with. But in any event, activation is pretty simple to knock it back, and let me move my headset to where I'm not. Uh... All right. And on this side, I won't reveal the brand, but just know it's a two, four, six shell holder with uh, bolts directly into the uh, retaining bolts for the uh, trigger group. I've seen other brands. Um, I didn't have a chance to pick them up uh, just simply because I hesitated and, you know, stuff happens to where it becomes limited, limited availability. This is good. I think, uh, you know, 11 shots right here. And then uh, another 10 in the tube and then one in the chamber if you do it like that. It's uh, not too heavy with the bandolier on or the sling and the ammo. Um, it does get heavy shooting it like that, uh, but the sling does come in handy. Uh, also, I have the Magpul uh, M-Lock grip I had at one point uh, one of the Picatinny rails installed and I, I don't believe I put Loctite on it or maybe I did and then it eventually just knocked itself loose after about 100 rounds of buckshot so I'm um, going to try something else later eventually but uh, don't know what to say um, but in, in any event I had uh, I think my internet's crashing a little bit in any event, I had ordered the uh, ordered this barrel from uh, Midwest, hoping it was flat dark earth. Um, you can tell there's a slight color variation between the folding buttstock, uh, the pump, or the uh, 
handle and then the barrel. Um, eventually I'll get the rest of this painted or I'll just use camo tape, but it would look pretty sweet in complete total flat dark earth. Uh, let's start by disassembly. Uh, first thing you need to do, remove all your shells and just check the chamber just to make sure there's no ammo in there. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is remove this tube there was a spring in there. Two ways to go about this, you loosen this entire section or the cap and then take out the spring. But also, since I have this modification on here, I need to actually loosen this sling holder. And the actual barrel extension has a nice little intention for this, so that really helps me. Oops, a daisy parts come off. So in any event, I just, you can kind of hear the spring a little bit, but pull it out. Take out the spring. And you can tell where I've been firing it that uh, since the, uh, the barrel's 18 and a half inches, and I think this comes out 24, <laughs> uh, with the actual holes in the choke, you can kind of see them right there also. <laughs> so it's time for some uh, some type of uh, heat resistant tape to kind of keep that from uh, going crazy. In any event, uh, it's just all one piece right here, this tube, it's not so bad. I, I keep the choke on, I mean, you can take the choke off. Um, I think this is just more for jabbing. I don't. I don't think this choke actually has any type of uh, tactical advantage for anything. It's a um, tactical extension cylinder. So I mean, I think it's just you know, just a slight extension. I think that's all it is. Like a, I don't know. I've seen plenty of others that would probably offer more. I think this just makes the flare stick out a little bit more or something, but of course standard beat over here in the front, but with the shotgun, after your first shot, you kind of know where you're hitting. Okay, so we've done that much. Uh, next thing we need to do, I believe, is we need to somehow get this handle off. Um, and I'm not completely sure if we just pop straight out. Maybe with the cap off now it will. I think you can just, nope. You need to put your finger in here and I guess let this slide come loose or let this unlock the entire section and this stuff just pops out. So, with uh, the barrel, the pump, the uh, ejector, all the good stuff. And now we have ourselves. Let me let me see if I can do something about the lighting. One sec. This this came out also. Uh, this is the uh, cap for the feed tube that uh, tells you when you're out. I guess red indicator. In any event, um, now we have a mini shotgun because it's you know without the barrel, just the uh, just the actual original tube for I think it was five shells. I picked this up uh, from a dealer in California way back when, just to kind of I guess piss those anti gunners off. So, um, in any event, uh, you know, again, like I said, I, I carry uh, strictly buckshot on this. I can say that uh, with... Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. This is like a total pain with all this stuff in the way. Put the barrel aside. Put the handle aside. Put the uh, ejector. And it might have been kind of weird for some people, but I, I noticed that this was um, 
sitting really tight against the inside housing and I, I simply just took a Dremel and stripped it a little bit and polished it and polished it and polished it just to uh, you know kind of keep I've, I've heard some stories of a few shells sticking in the 870 so I mean you know I bought it I paid for it I can do whatever I want with it it's not like I had uh, uh, done anything that would actually put the make the power more dangerous to operate um, activating the weapon initially you need to press this button down and activate the pump to feed a round in there and of course the safety is down here I've actually ordered an extended uh, safety it's a little bit larger so if you're wearing gloves it's pretty fun it's pretty sweet um, definitely better than the original but uh, in any event you just need to press this down push in the pump continue holding it while you press the pump and after that point uh, once you begin firing all I need to do is just pump you no longer need to uh, push this to uh, be able to fire rounds and of course over here on the rear section is the other swivel point for the sling uh, I got these from ATI as well I think I ordered this at the same time I ordered the stock I did not have a sling at that time I didn't get a sling until recently but um yeah um you know i mean they work I, I guess they're worth the four or five bucks whatever it was i paid for them might have been a little bit more but uh you know pretty nice uh the grip this right here the section um you know again you cannot put one of these uh, i mean you'd have to seriously alter possibly um affect the integrity of uh, I guess the recoil absorption in order to fit one of the uh, clip point slings right here I mean this gives you the same option without needing to uh, install the special adapter and then the spacer that is the clip point for the sling um, and I believe it's just a strict standard allen wrench I don't believe it's a uh, T anything I think it's just strictly uh, it's like an 11 millimeter I think I'm not completely sure but um, just take one with take it take an allen wrench with you to the range because this will come loose I didn't put Loctite in it and after about you know 90 95 rounds a buck it did begin to come loose even uh, firing the shotgun in this position and also with the uh, also with the buttstock extended so um, and you know again it's it's buckshot it's not super hot uh slug rounds or anything like that so it's it's pretty manageable with this weapon i like it um uh, you know is what it is but uh you know it fires at a at a decent rate if you can uh activate the uh slide and are safely pointed in the right direction still and do your follow-up um Overall weight, I believe, is eight and a half pounds. It's, I think, for me, it is at least. Um, the next thing you can do, I mean, I'm not going to since I actually have that six round uh, holder on the other side. You would just take a, two more Allen wrenches and you would loosen these two screws. They are pretty long, they go all the way through. They're at least three inches long, possibly three and a half. Um, you take them out and then from that point you can simply just pull this out it, it sits along the actual frame so whenever you put it back in there it's it's the same thing you just need to make sure it sure it sits down uh, back in here and you'll hear you push in there it's gonna it's probably gonna sit in here at least this much and you'll pull it back and it'll click it'll make an audible click then you verify by checking the actual uh, spacings you'll see, be able to see on the other side whatever there is, if there's a light or anything that uh, you line up correctly and just uh, retighten the screws. Um, you know, other than that, I mean, it's, I, I think in order to, um, let me point this out. In order to be able to remove um, the feed tube and the barrel, there are two indentions in here. And, then, and this is also how you uh, manually eject uh, shells. If they're already fed into the tube, 
uh, you press one, I believe it's over here on the right side, and it, it will kick the shell out. I mean, you, it, if this feed ramp is down, uh, you may have to turn the shotgun to the side, but if you push it in, it locks, you push the button, it kicks the shell out. Let's say that the last round you fired um, had a little bit too much kick, or you need to uh, just do a safety check, and uh, got a little dark right there, sorry. Um, and you know you just need a weapon to no longer have ammo in it. Say it's your last two or three rounds, you can just quickly uh, unload. But so that's how. Oh, sorry, I just had a phone call, so um, <laughs> I had to. Uh, I'm a little distracted. I was considering putting like modifying, possibly just putting like like a gel pad over this, and then using gorilla tape along the edges, or you know something kind of. But it's you know again. Buckshot doesn't kick at all, at least for me. It's just like, I mean, even leaning into it, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like, um, I think a 30 30 has more kick than Buckshot. So, um, and you know, again, if this comes loose, if the shotgun actually comes loose, um, it'd be kind of pointless to have the pad on there. Um, in terms of modifying the 870, I would probably avoid this type of stock just due to the fact that I, I had issues keeping it stuck, uh, keeping it secured. But again, I didn't use long tight. I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep this stock. But uh, in any event, I mean, it, it, it runs, but it's not extended use. I mean, I would recommend staying stock. But all right, uh, let me see. Cleaning is really like so simple that it's almost pointless, to be honest with you. I have my uh, sanitary wipes, my, my firearm sanitary wipes. so long to shoot this thing was because I was too lazy to go to the gun store or whatever your local outfitters and that was one end and here's the other part uh, get a four foot cleaning rod this will actually you know again um, allow you to use tip attachments for four brushes or uh, cloth clips sort of as I have right here And it's <laughs> it's almost kind of silly now thinking about it because it's unless you're firing like super dirty shotgun rounds. I mean, I, I, I know people who haven't cleaned theirs in two or three outings, and you know they kind of hold off on it. So, but in any event, um, also picked up one of these larger bore brushes, which is fantastic. Actually, that might not be the correct one because it's not sitting into this tip unless I remove the extension. Nope, it's just some different type of brush. I'm not keeping track of this. Okay, well, let me check because that's the whole reason about this kit was for. Uh, the shotgun cleaning. Well, let's go ahead and get this out. My favorite Mr. Uh, Copper remover. And this is actually how you enjoy your afternoon. You just uh, really kind of you know, make sure you're deliberate when you're doing stuff. Okay. You know, I might actually need to check my gun bag, my cleaning bag, to see if... Oh, wait, wait, that's what it is. I'm silly. Um... <laughs> The, everything that I just showed you was correct, other than 
the fact that there is this tip which was also going to go onto this board brush however it was attached to the uh, to the uh, sanitary wipe to the little cloth swabs uh, swath, cloth swabs clip I have no idea so many nouns to tie into that little instrument but uh, I went in and put the board brush on there and there being that, that extension that I showed you the adapter so here we go and I'm gonna probably just dip it in here and then run it through the barrel I'm not really like super worried about this thing getting dirty I mean it was it's a it's a it's a home defense shotgun. It's not a skeet shooting shotgun. It's it's not a three gun competition shotgun. It's you know it's just home defense. So I don't need to pamper it. It's meant to be abused and cleaned. That's it. And eventually the borders will come. But just, you know, run it through like that a few times. Until you can smell the solvent, I suppose. <laughs> and then, I probably, in a foolish way, I didn't even put the cap on this. I could have easily knocked that over. Would have had to open the windows and get the wet back, and or the shampoo back, and... That's not fun. Not that I've ever had to do it, but needing to stop this video solely for that reason. CLP, uh, I'm not gonna use that uh, other hops that I have. The uh, I will get at the lubricating oil, but not the uh, other bore brush cleaner. <gasps> Excuse me. Uh, simply because I've, you know, taken this out to the range kicked about you know 100 125 actually it was about 100 um, I took 250 um, but a couple of uh, the boxes were the same and they were smoky and I was worried about getting complaints so I just sort of left them in the bag after about three or four, <laughs> three or four shells but and then event we've got the uh, other swath the uh, slightly lightly soaked or damp cleaning swath and just run it through the barrel again and I'll show you how it just sort of pops out I mean normally like I said with the larger bore you probably want to use two two swaths but here, here's even after using the bore brush you can see and I thoroughly cleaned it after I had uh, taken it to the range so there's just always going to be something in there. It's uh, it's not one of those uh, specially lined barrels. It's you know, it's just meant to uh, shoot rounds. It's it's heat treated, but it's you know again, it's not like uh, some of those that are like highly polished and cryogenically dipped or some weird BS like that, or like whatever. Looks like my internet's kind of slowing down again. <laughs> but uh, since I had already lightly dampened that first swath, I just put another little rag over this, or another little wipe. I'm gonna run through the barrel again. Yeah, and it's still pretty, pretty dirty. It's like a burnt marshmallow. It's pretty bad. And I actually have uh, one of those oxygen reducers to keep these from getting dirty, but it may have just been from putting it in a uh, standard carrying case in a few transits. So, um, because I, I know I thoroughly cleaned this after I had uh, taken it to the range, but um, no worries. I'm going to get the other kit and see what we can do.
little fudge packer. I don't know, like, uh, what I did with it. So, whatever. We're just gonna throw some CLP over this. I don't have time. I do not have time. I'm so busy today. But, we're just doing a video just to kind of keep the channel alive because, you know, I've been pretty busy lately. I haven't even had time to, uh, jump on the PS4 and stream. Um, I, I don't have the system at home and, uh, the internet connection's a little, I mean, it's good enough for, it's good enough for online play, it's just not good enough for streaming at the same time, so, and I haven't, I haven't, I don't have the password for the second modem in the house, so I can't, you know, um, run the PS off of one and then run the laptop off the other, so. So in any event, we just used the CLP that came off of the uh, shell ejector. Um, and we've done this, this little boot right here. <clears throat> and let me see. I, I'm not really too worried about cleaning anything else. I mean, it, it's so simple to clean this thing. If you take out the trigger group, just get like a Q-tip and run some more CLP. And, you know, it's, it's this thing. It's like... It's like macaroni and cheese, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's nothing. I mean, it's, it's so simple that you can teach, uh, you can teach, you know, a teenage kid how to clean it if you're, um, trying to get them into shooting or something, but, um, in any event, here's the most important part, uh, you will see, you will see it better in person, but there are two little indentions along this guide bar that feeds into uh, the main portion of the firearm. And this is actually uh, the pump handle. You're going to want to place this ejection. Uh, I, I'm not really sure what it's called, the ejection case or whatever. I, I really haven't looked at my manuals in forever, but um, See if I can't just get this to sit down right. Okay, this is without the actual ejector, but um, I guess notice how there's a little bit higher on this end that's going to sit right over this. And I believe this goes in like this. It could be wrong, and I'm breaking stuff. But I don't think it'll sit over the other way. It's just basically... Let me move this barrel. <laughs> basically, once you have this in here, like you're going to have it in a shotgun, um, this polished port is going to be what you see when you action it. So you want this on this side as opposed to putting it in reverse and not being able to see it. So, I mean, that's pretty much how it goes. Um, so just make sure this this is installed correctly. And that's basically the same side that you'll uh, feed into the actual uh, housing. So, let's see if it's going to sit on there. Somewhere. Maybe it's the other way. Reverse, because that's how I had it a minute ago, right? Right there. So it's actually going to be the other way around, this higher edge towards technically the outside, but this is going to be fit into fit into this right here. Um, there aren't any guide rods, I believe, but uh, actually no, there, there's, there's a slight indention, but you're going to line these two little rods up here where my finger is pointing at. You're gonna, you're gonna line these into uh, here. To a certain point, I believe you actually need to be pretty careful because at the same time that you're doing this, um, there's an actual ring on this pump that must go over. And this ring actually has a cap, but with the extension, it's 
not as obvious. So I've got it slightly fit in there. Um, just make sure again that uh, that shell feed ramp is down. Um, you could probably hear it, but let me show you. See it? You need to make sure that's down. Get this fed into a certain point. And earlier I stated that there are a couple of indentions in here. You need to press one of them in and keep it pressed in. So that's um, a two-handed two -handed procedure. Uh, you're probably going to want to use your left hand. And right here where my finger's pointed, actually hold the firearm. But I'm trying to keep this camera. I'm trying to keep the camera to where you can see it. Let's see. Okay, so I've got my left thumb in the inside where the where the tube chamber's at, where the uh, shell chamber's at, and I'm pressing that in. And I believe I need to press both of these in at the same time. I think one of them locks, and then the other one you need to hold down. Yeah. Okay. So one of them locks, the other one you can just press in, and then it's just going to feed right in there. Um, if you extend the if you extend the actual pump handle. Once you press it in, if you extend it, it's just going to pop right back out. So just keep it right there. Because the only thing holding that in is basically this tube. And again, I can probably show you, but... Uh, okay. Let me see. Take that back. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna work. It's in there, but I actually know it's gonna sit in place. We're good. Um, it's a little difficult to really grasp how the shotgun is going to work because you would normally believe that uh, you know, like with rifles, um, you can't you know you can't remove the barrel as far as my knowledge goes. And with the shotgun barrel, you saw it just pop right out as soon as I uh, went through the motion. So um, I would probably just, you know, kind of get over that fear. Um, there are um, ways just to ensure that the barrel is going to be secure other than just uh, checking for firmness. Um, you know, for the most part, it's been cleaned. I mean, it's just a light cleaning. It's like a field strip. It's nothing special. But... Um, Let's try, oh, that's what it is, that's right. So I've, I've showed you that so far, but we actually need to do that actual method at the same time that we're feeding the barrel in there. So I need to uh, see about getting this to come back out. So let me see if I can get this out. Um, press the inside tab. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, press the tab in here again. Of course, I had to have it over my shoulder, but I've, went, I've gone that to where I can do that. But I believe the barrel must go in at the same time as, as this ejector. So. And it doesn't have to be perfect when you initially start putting it over there. Just, um, you know, realize that you can knock over the ejector as I've done. It's a little bit heavier with all the shells on the, uh, <laughs> on the saddles, but, um, you know, again, just sort of put it to where it's going to feed on that, that ring catch down here. It'll catch. You should be fine. But, um, there's actually an indention on the barrel that lines up perfectly with the ejector. You can see it right here. That uh, once you start to press it in, press in that little indent, and I'm probably just gonna have to do this. Um, press in the indent, you'll hear the audible click, and then get, first you get the side closest to you, then you get the other side, and you just sort of, oops, gently feed the barrel in there. Don't worry about the uh, the pump. Just feed the barrel in there. Make sure that both of those tabs are uh, pressed in. Oops. I'm not doing it at the same time. Let me see. Line it up.
It might be a little bit easier if I had this uh, folding stock extended because it's a little bit hard to actually verify visually that uh, the barrel is going to go in there. And I think that was the other issue is uh, just ensuring that when you're getting ready to put the barrel in there that uh, everything's sitting over the right spot. Uh, that being the uh, actual little guide rods that are on the pump as well as the uh, barrel feeding into the main housing while at the same time uh, that clip is lining up so I will get it I will get it <laughs> I think the most, I think the largest challenge is just making sure that you get it all in there at the same time. Um, if you put one part in there too soon, that's sort of where the uh, issue comes up. So. Okay, let's try this again. I've got the uh, barrel, I'm sliding it over. Everything else is sort of lined up. Just being a little grumpy with me today. It's like, why don't you take me to the range anywhere? <laughs> okay. Okay, you just need to like twist it over a little bit once you get this to where I, I once this ejector is about right here. When I say twist, just rotate the barrel this way a little bit. It'll sit right in. Uh, it's not secured yet because you do not have that cap on there, so the barrel will still come out. Um, so don't have it pointed down like that, like I do. But. Um, but just know that at least now the barrel's seated. Um, it's not gonna set in there and lock. It's not like uh, it's not like a Benelli. But the next thing we'll do, whoops, other than being loud, is feed this uh, empty indicator into the uh, stock tube, and then the spring. And the spring's a little long. I, I've I've trimmed it a few times and it's still a little long, but it's enough to where I can get the shells that I need and it still function perfectly. Uh, you'll have to determine your own length or tension. Uh, but then we'll go ahead and screw this uh, extension on. And it doesn't take me quite as long while I'm if I'm not talking. I'm just focusing on doing it. I could you know do it just in a few minutes, but. So anyway, I went ahead and uh, screwed that cap on. And next thing I'm going to do is uh, reattach this front end uh, swivel or sling attachment. I'm going to reinstall this back on that choke tube. It's a little tight. I mean, it's not uh, you know it's it's uh, it's not metal. So even though you don't have to worry about um, anything getting scratched up, it's, it's, you still have to be gentle. I mean, it, it'll hold the sling. It's, it's, uh, pretty strict on there. However, you know, don't over tighten it. You'll, you'll strip it easily. Um, just make it to where you, it's, you can still get another half turn off of it. And even though that's my poster, don't worry about the poster. I'll try and do a zoom out with the actual firearm. So you can see the extension. You can see the uh, six shots. I keep one of bird shot. You never know. You might be in the wilderness and need to get a foul to feed yourself. But then you have, of course, the five on the bottom. But all in all, I mean, it's it's a sturdy, it's a sturdy firearm. It's. Uh, 
It is what it is, though. Okay, let me see. I've rotated the camera. I just need to make sure that I can... Uh... Have everything appropriated. Moving it back just a little bit. You know, it's a little different too because I've uh, moved things around to where I don't have the entirety of my desk <laughs> to put things up. So, in any event, we'll just count them out. I have uh, these two and a quarter inch shells, which are not bad. I mean, they you will not see in my semi auto, they jam. And it's a very expensive semi-auto. I'll do that video pretty soon, maybe next. Uh, that's two shells. But in terms of uh, these mini tubes, I mean these mini shells, they feed flawlessly on this thing. So you just go up. And actually, I can actually loosen the cap um, about halfway of the threading and feed, still feed 10 of the two and three quarter shells up there, but I just like to keep it secure. And let's get number 11 in there. Unless I have a tightening. Nope, that's 11. And then, you know, of course, if you feed around in there, it's gonna feed it through here. But, you know, again, let me show you how you can manually just keep the shell out if you need to. Oop, and drop it on the ground. But in any event, uh, you know, I, I think it's definitely worth the money that I pay for it. I'm not wearing gloves, so I gotta be a little bit careful. I've actually uh, had that abrasive uh, action against my uh, knuckles and fingers. So it's uh, something to be careful about. But, you know, for the most part, um, it's a good shot, yeah. Uh, 18 and a half inch barrel. We don't have to say about that, but thanks for watching. Um, it's a good home defense shot, again. I, 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 anyway, later. Complain, but see y'all later.